My name is Ricky. This is the Australian Guitar Show. Hey, mate. There he is. <laughs> hey, John. My face is glowing. Apparently, my light is a bit much. It's very luminous. <laughs> uh, how's things? Yeah, good, man. Thank you so yeah, much nice. for... Um, for giving us your time tonight. I know yeah, you're, you're a pretty busy man, balancing out life and everything. That's so, a pleasure to be here. Yeah, that's cool. So I was gutted when I was down in Tasmania and hey, but, uh, we, didn't, we didn't get to cross paths just because of where yes. we were travelling and so on. But um, yeah. we, we'll make it down there again some other time. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, hey, tell us... Tell us a, a, a little bit about you, like where, where you're based and um, what got you started in this. Yeah, so I'm based in Launceston, so the north part of Tassie. I uh, grew up out in the sticks, actually, so right at the foot of the Western Tiers. My parents own a dairy farm there. Um, yeah, like, and mum taught me how to play music. I've always kind of been in that world um and then oh, my granddad taught me a, a bit about woodworking and whatnot and so eventually the two collided the two worlds woodworking and music and um i don't know i've just always been the sort of person that um gets a little bit obsessive about things and intrigued by things and i dismantled every guitar i owned um, just to figure out how they worked and, <clears throat> you know, before I knew it, I was repairing them, um, and had a crack at building some at some stage. So how old were you, how old were you when you started playing guitar? Oh, I was grade four, maybe grade three or four. I was playing guitar. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know, I probably haven't improved much since. <laughs> I'm probably having more fun now than ever. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. And and so with um, therefore kind of transferring your kind of like woodworking skills and so forth into mucking around with repairs, like was that around the same time or a little later in life? No, oh, we might be plagued by the uh, the old connection. Yeah, either that or John's done. Maybe that's all he's got left to say. It's not me, is it? Oh, he's gone. <laughs> so that was it. I hope you enjoyed the interview with John. <laughs> I wonder if he'll come back. Um, yeah, that might be uh, – Tassie is down. There you go. I noticed he talked about growing up in the northern part of Tasmania, which might explain his tan. Um, backbeat drummer, uh, you can you can take over. You want to take over and play the part of John, is that it? It's just me. No, you're uh, – yeah, John's gone. That's it. That's all he had to say. <laughs> no, here he is. He's still here. Um, I've just sent a request to John. We'll see if that means he can uh, join back in. Shit, Tassie connection. Yeah. Oh, there he is. No, I actually pressed a button that I shouldn't have. Um, <laughs> don't don't let Woody tell you anything. Oh, that's who Backbeat Drummer is? <laughs> backbeat Drummer and I go way back. We went to school to each, uh, with each other and have played in <laughs> bands for quite a while. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> well, I, I was just commenting that um, when you mentioned you were from northern Tasmania, that that kind of explains your tan. Yeah, I swear I I do have skin colour. It's the lighting. It's the lighting in my shirt. Sure, it's, sure. it's not. It's not. It's not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, it's picking up where we were. So roughly, what age did you start mucking around with transferring that woodworking stuff into building a guitar? She was. Uh, I mean, through high school, I tinkered with it a fair bit. Um, it wasn't really until college that I actually got a chance to, to make something from scratch. So that was, what, 16, 17? That was an early yep. start with college. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and, yeah, I actually didn't – after college, I didn't build anything for quite a long time. 
um, mostly because I didn't have I didn't have anywhere to build anything. I tried building mm-hmm. something on my kitchen bench bench once in a yep. rental unit. Um, that was not a great idea. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have very many tools. Um, and it wasn't until I met my now wife that I had somewhere to build stuff. She, mm. her, her house had a garage and I just commandeered it and set up shop basically. Yeah, that's cool. So, and so, yeah. so your fir- first build was, did you just kind of copy another existing kind of guitar or did you do your own thing straight away? Uh, my first build was a lap steel um, and that was kind of based on what I'd seen around. Mm. Um, the next instrument was a fretless bass and that was completely, that just came out of my head. I'd spent a long time um, working on these designs and it was kind of my major project for my woodworking um, lessons, I guess. Yeah. Won an award for it, which is kind of cool. So, so uh, through in, still in school time, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And um, you've, 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 got quite the knack for uh, now building guitars that out of some pretty luxurious woods. Yeah, we are pretty pretty lucky to have the timbers that we do down here. Um, mm. Even if they do try and kill you, um, it's <laughs> yeah. always a bit of a concern. Blackwood is uh, it's pretty toxic stuff, yeah, but it dangerous. looks good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The... Um, I mean, I know for me, when, when, when I first started doing this page and saw, uh, you know, your, your post of your Solomon, which I ended up owning, mm. uh, you know, and I, I haggled you for a bit right, right straight away because I thought it was for sale. I didn't realise it was your personal guitar, you know. So I was very, uh, very grateful to have had that guitar in my possession for, for a while there and before we uh, kind of hit the road and just started roaming around. Mm. Not really any room for a guitar collection in a in a little eighteen foot no. caravan. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of people watching here who have got several pieces of my car, uh, guitar collection at their house. So, oh, really? what's left of it anyway? Nice. All <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, um, enjoying. Yeah. So when you um, I mean, you're, the name you've made for yourself clearly you've got a bit of a you've got a bit of a worldwide kind of following kind of going on. It's yeah. That's. That's Instagram's fault. <laughs> I, didn't actually, I hadn't intended on uh, kind of reaching as far as I have as soon as I did. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I kind of started my building career, I guess you'd call it, um, on Instagram. Like at the time I was just doing repairs, started doing, uh, started to build for myself just in the downtime. Mm. Uh, a customer saw it. Um, and I built one for them, and then I don't know. I guess that was Instagram in kind of its early days, where it was easy to reach people everywhere. You know, you weren't weren't held uh, by the algorithm. Yeah, so, yeah, kind of like how um, oh crap, what was that band that became really famous off MySpace? The one band that became <laughs> huge. You, you know, that, know. That, that song "You Look Good on the Dance Floor." Um, oh yeah. I can't remember who Somebody that is, out there but... would know which band it was. Yeah. But they just went gangbusters, right? They were huge. Some pom band, British band. and yeah. they, uh... So sometimes you've just got to be the first person to join something and then everyone looks at you and then <laughs> two months later, everything's screwed up again and nobody watches anything. So, mm. um, Like you're saying... I just noticed my mum... I just noticed my mum uh, is watching. So, hey, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mum. <laughs> I noticed... Um, Arctic uh, Monkeys. Um, Thanks. Sorry. Thanks, Dave. Arctic, Mon- oh, Arctic monkeys. monkeys. Yes, that's it. That's yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. So they, they made it huge, thanks to Tom. Yeah. Yeah. My space was great. I loved my oh, space. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, well, yeah. We talk about the glory days of being able to change how it looks and, you know, adding a song that played when people visited. Yeah. Having your top, your top to be friends. friends with Tom. Not like yeah. Zuckerberg. Nobody wants to be friends with Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah, that's true. Hey, and so the, the the what inspires you with your shape designs? I mean, you've got this. I see a natural tip towards some tradition, but mm. you've just managed to kind of capture a vibe of your own. So, what what, what kind of dre influences you? Yeah, I mean, I've I've always been a, a Fender fan. Like mm. most of the stuff I do is kind of based 
on those um, those shapes. Um, <clears throat> but in terms of the other stuff, I I'm, I don't know where that comes from. Like um, I was in the furniture building world, world for a little while, and I think you know elements of that stuff definitely comes in. Mm. Um, I've got a, there's a question there from uh, Mr. Glynn's pickups. Uh, how do we go about designing guitars? And um, it often starts with, you know, seeing a shape that I like um, from another instrument. Um, and usually, I'll, you know, I, I design all my stuff uh, in uh, design software. So I use Affinity Design. And I'll just um, trace it usually at full scale um, and then start working the shapes, you know, try and put my own spin on it, go through quite a few iterations before I get to a point where I'm happy and then I'll print it out and realise that the scale is all off um, and then go and tweak it again or just redesign it for fun. Or sometimes I don't even end up using the designs. It's but pretty yeah, amazing I'll, what that modern technology has yeah. uh, allows <laughs> you to be able yeah. to do, isn't it? Yeah. Like I'm still just a pencil and paper guy, you know, and I even <laughs> struggle with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it, it, it's, um, it's super handy for me because... Um, it just helps me visualize things a lot more. Um, but then also just being able to, you know, take a particular outline and print it off um, and being able to use it straight away. Is mm. So do you print it off super in full size? Yeah. Wow. Well, on A4 sheets. So I've got a method down where I just... And then stick them all together. Print. Yeah. Um, every now and then, like, I'll, I'll print it off at Officeworks or something in full size. Yep. yep. Um, but... Usually it's just at home. Yeah, Seems no, to do cool. the job. Yeah, no, that's cool. I noticed yeah. that, uh, uh, I don't know whether it's Roby or Robbie. I, with being a single B, I'm going to assume Roby. Um, Roby Custom Shop, they built some pretty cool guitars here as well. It was just asking yeah. which tool or machine you couldn't live without. Ooh. Um, that is a good question. I think my router, yeah. like, I don't know if I could do anything without my router. <laughs> yeah, getting um, doing hollow bodies and uh, yeah, but you'd you'd have to be going back to pretty old school techniques there if you were going to do it without a, a little bit of power. Yeah, I'd probably uh, need to do some strength and endurance training as well. Um, yeah, yeah, to, to do well, all I know, that. I know for me, with my second guitar build that I uh, mucked around with teaching myself during lockdowns because there was nothing else to do apart from bang my head against the wall. <laughs> um, uh, my first one I did a typical telly kind of vibe but then the next one I decided just to kind of make up a shape as I went and and I also tried to use as less power tools as possible Yeah, but you know neck pockets and pick up yeah. a, you know, just I, I didn't have the time or patience for it so yeah routers are a, a good yeah. winner I mean I've seen some guys do all that stuff by hand and, and they've got Got a lot more patience than I do. <laughs> yeah, there's some mad skills out there. There's a few guys that build double bases, and they always impress me just with uh, yeah. dealing with that level of size of of massive wood and and uh, the yeah. perfection required there. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so what do you yeah. what do you want to know about the the F hole design? F -holes. On, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I've dubbed it the swoop. Um, actually, no, I didn't do that. Someone else dubbed it the swoop, but I've kind of hung on to it. Um, I actually don't have an example here to show you. Actually, no, I do. Give me a second. No, all right. So it seems we've got a few people on board here watching away. I, I, I've seen a few of you go past. It's great seeing you all there. Um, Michael from Polaris Spaces has just joined in too. He didn't think he'd make it earlier, but here he is. So g'day, Michael. Ah, the swoop. Cool. The swoop. So this little dude out here. And I have no idea where where it came from, but it <laughs> Ben saying, Hey Luna. I don't I don't actually think that's my dog barking, Ben. <laughs> um I this is a design feature that I think uh it was either to cover a mistake or I just made it up on the fly. Um, there wasn't actually a huge amount of thought I put into it. Um, I was just like, 
maybe it would work, and it did. Um, and and so, aesthetically, it just looks fantastic. Yeah, it um, yeah. confuses a lot of people about just the geometry of it. Mm. Um, but basically, the top is relatively thick. It's a half inch thick. And there's a wrap of binding that goes all the way around. Um, yep. And then I just route out along there to reveal the chamber that's inside and then run the binding along there. Yeah, nice. And, and what's that one you're working on there? That's, that's another Solomon. Uh, uh, Gideon. Oh, it's a Gideon. So, Sorry, I couldn't quite yeah, tell. So the, the picture. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, is so this one is... Or camera backwards? The camera's backwards. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so this one is actually for a guy in Hobart called Dennis, and it's almost ready to put together. He's been waiting patiently for it. Um, yeah. So how does it feel under my arm? That's a good question. It is actually quite smooth. So I, you, you don't feel this step at all. Your arm sits kind of over this section, and it's mm. quite heavily rounded over. And then the bevel, um, you know, it just kind of you, – you don't feel it, basically. And then Sean, Sean was just saying, what are we building? So I don't know if he's just joined. Oh, he has just joined in, so he probably just missed a little bit of the, uh, the details there with that. But what, what finish have you used on that with the satin black? Yeah, so um, I've been experimenting. Uh, like most of my guitars change. So a lot of the time, um, you know, they're stained or ebonized and then um, I'll just do an oil finish. Um, but these ones are all um, kind of the last few have been a lacquer finish. Mm -hmm. So a satin lacquer. Um, this particular one and another one that I finished just before it, I tried with a black paint and that failed. So I stripped it back and then did uh, just a black stain again. And I think it looks way better um, mm. with the stain, with the, the, the satin lacquer on top. And what, what kind of curing time are you looking at that for? A um, couple of weeks. Now it's still kind of powder and off on your fingers. Um, well, this stuff actually, like, touch dry. It, it's cured in, like, overnight. You'd be able to handle it pretty well. Um, but I like to leave them, you know, to, to cure properly so that I don't put dents in them as easy when I'm putting them together. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, I, my stuff takes about a month to cure properly. Yeah. yeah. Generally. And um, I saw that um, uh, uh, Weave Guitars just asking kind of what kind yeah. of waiting time you're generally looking at for a build. So waiting time. <laughs> So my my order books are actually closed. Um, um, mainly. So how do you work that? Is that the kind of thing you open up for a little bit and then close, or? Yeah. So I'm trying to figure some stuff out at the moment. Um, like the last twelve months, eighteen months, um, have actually been really tricky uh, to keep on top of things. Um, so like this time last year, I would have told people, you know, three or four months um, for turn around um but like that's it's blown out to six to eight months um mm. partly due to getting parts is incredibly tricky at the moment mm. um a lot of my suppliers have gone from you know offering a, a couple of week turnaround on orders to you know three or four months um which kind of you know just throws out your your whole build order basically mm. um but then also um, I don't know, it's just a lot of other factors in life. Like um, my wife and I are wedding photographers, so mm. we actually have, you know, a pretty busy uh, summertime um, and just being a parent and <laughs> having, you know, a first-time homeowner, all that sort of yeah. stuff uh, yeah. has completely thrown busy, things yeah. out. And, like, I moved into a new workshop um, a year and a bit ago and just still still settling in. Like, um, mm. I kind of didn't really uh, stop to kind of get everything in order. I'm just kind of trying to get it going as I can, basically. Um, mm. So uh, once I've uh, finished my current kind of order log, um, I'm just going to take a bit of time off um, to 
reset a little bit. Um, yeah. There's a lot of my processes that need a lot of work to be able to you know, shorten that that order time um, and kind of produce a, a, a better volume of guitars without bringing the quality down. Mm. Um, yeah, there's a lot to work on. So next next year is going to be busy in its own way, but uh, without the pressure of uh, customer order deadlines and that sort of stuff. But yeah, it'll be interesting. It's, it's inter- it seems to be a pretty common struggle amongst uh, you know builders and repairers at the moment getting parts. Mm. You know, it's yeah. a lot of people. A lot of people haven't really, um, if they're not kind of building or repairing, they I couldn't wouldn't really know how difficult mm. it is to get parts at the moment. Yeah, uh, due to yeah, even issues or manufacturing all around the world shutting down and yeah, all even all the um, even the bigger companies are having their their struggles like the last uh, order I did with Goto in Japan who are normally like really quick um, that was two two months longer than it was expected mm. uh, so you know mm-hmm. even the big guys are struggling yeah yeah well I noticed Gibson are even they're now just sending their guitars straight out without headstocks <laughs> <waiting for them. laughs> yeah just cut out the middle man it's all good <laughs> We might get sued for that one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, you posted a bit of a teaser guitar the other day, which you asked everybody, "What's this made out of?" You know. And, yeah. And and obviously a lot of people guessed uh, aluminium, but tell us a bit yeah. about what you did use. Uh, so that was um, a little experiment. I wanted to see one um, how how cheaply I could build a guitar and how fast I could build a guitar. And if you look at the guys in history that were experts at that, like Dan Electro back in, when were they, the 60s, um, mm. they love the masters at fast and cheap. Um, and the materials they used was plywood or pine or poplar uh, and masonite, so hardwood, uh, hardboard, like the underlay stuff that you get from Bunnings. It's, mm. it's basically wood fibres that have been compressed um, and heated uh, so there's no extra like resins or anything like MDF has. Uh, mm. It's pure wood. It's just the lignin, which is the the glue that holds wood fibers together, basically. Um, yeah, and I used a, a core of pine. It's actually guitars right here. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So just a slab of pine that I chambered out as I normally would, and yep. because. Um, because it's, I started with like basically a skeleton. I could, um, I could use my jigsaw just to to route the guts out, clean it up yep. with the router, and then just slapped a bit of masonite on the top and the back. And um, yeah, it came together in like a week. Um, I had wow. the neck from another project, so that was a bit of a shortcut. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it just Pretty it finishes yeah. well. Yeah. So I was yeah. stoked with that. And, yeah, and no, that looks great, you know, and I love that it threw a few people off the, the, the scent because, you know, yeah. when I looked at it, I thought, well, the front, does, it looked it looked like an aluminium yeah. thing, and I was like, oh, cool, this is what you're doing. And then when I saw the side, I could just see that little grain pattern yeah. through the finish, and I was like, oh, I don't know, is that maybe an angle grinder you've kind of put through just to <laughs> throw people off? That'd, you know? that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really cool. Um, but, yeah, but the aluminium thing, like six, no, maybe even a year ago, um, I, was, I was having a bit of an existential crisis because um, <laughs> over the years I've actually developed a, a bit of a sensitivity to blackwood where, like, if I breathe even the slightest molecule of this dust in, um, it just sets off, um, just sets off, like, hay fever, asthma, like all sorts of nasty stuff, which I like that, um, you know, my body is probably giving me a, a bit of a warning sign um, instead of just straight up getting cancer. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to um, listen to that kind of stuff, eh? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so basically I started looking at, at alternative materials. Like what if, what if I'd, I, I wasn't building guitars out of wood, wood, what would it look mm. like? And kind of aluminium is kind of the, not the next 
best thing. But in terms of the tools that I have and the skill set that I have, like I could transfer a lot of that stuff to, to aluminium. You can use all your, your, all your power tools that you'd cut wood with, with yep. most grades of aluminium. It's pretty yep. easy to work with. Um, so it, it is something that I'll actually be exploring next year. Um, that's mm. one of the things that I've got set aside to tinker with um, is an aluminium guitar. Uh, because it also has the benefit of, um, you know, I guess being relatively quick to put together. Um, mm. You know, you can, uh, you don't have to wait for glues and stuff to dry. You, mm. you know, if you, I'm going to teach myself how to um, braise weld. So, you know, bending all the sides and then brazing a top and a back on and mm. having a resonant chamber, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I met up with um, uh, Ben Lautner, who is up in Wiseman's yeah. Ferry, just out of Sydney. Um, we, yeah. we were when we were on the road during our travels. He just messaged me randomly uh, to say, "Hey, man, if you come in past this area, I'd love you to come and check out my resonating guitars that I've been building." Yeah. Yeah. And and it was ironically that only the day prior we had looked at. Um, uh, camping options in Wiseman's Ferry as we were heading further mm. up the, the northwest co uh, the yeah. northeast coast. So, and I said to him, "Oh, that's funny." I said, "We were actually looking at coming through to this place," and um, and he said, "Oh, that's that's actually my place. It's on Hip Camp. So uh, <laughs> yeah, come and stay." So <laughs> it was really nice. bizarre. Um, yeah. But yeah, he looked great wealth of knowledge um, with with his um, techniques with like brazing and what he learned from others around him mm. as well. Um, you know, so that's that's what I found pretty cool with with a lot of the guys on this page and builders like yourself is that it's it's been great seeing them kind of communicating with each other and and mm -hmm. sharing their skill set together, which is I think yeah. a um, a real bonus to today's technology. Mm. And you know, people aren't as secretive about what they're kind of doing anymore. It's not it's not quite yeah. the the great race that it used to be between Gibson and Fender. It's it's now pretty <laughs> eclectic. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of the things that keeps me on instagram basically is the uh, mm. the other builders are just super nice and you know often i'll see someone doing something that i've been pondering um mm. and they're often you know very willing to to i guess share their advice experience um help me figure some problems out and um mm. you know, it was only a couple of weeks ago that i was asking people uh, about cnc machines um, mm. And you you actually pointed out that Dirty Elvis um, does a lot of stuff with CNC, and sure enough, mm. he was um, very helpful. So, yeah, yeah, Matt Gandy's a good man. Yeah, yeah, he's he's just relocated up or relocating to Gundagai, which I think is great. Yeah. His last name's Gandy. so I now call him the Gandy guy from Gundagai. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and pickups. You know, you, yeah. you've, um, I think the, the Solomon that I had, which I noticed the guy, uh, the guy who bought it off me is actually watching too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hung around. But that had some McNally's in it. I think that had a yeah. dagger slapper and, oh, I forget what the other one, a cornucopia maybe or something like that. Yep. That'd be the one. Um, but, um, so what draws you to particular, like when you go to, build something do you kind of have a vision in mind of what pickups you want for it already or do you kind of do that towards the end um well i have to think about it at the start of a build now um just to get the the pickups <laughs> on the way to well, me yeah, yeah, yeah uh, so there's um yeah i don't know I've, I've got a couple of favorite sets from mcnelly that i just tend to keep coming back to um you know kind of categorized these certain sets to, you know, I want a guitar to kind of have this vibe um, and it's hardware reflects that. So the, you know, I need the pickups to match it. Um, but I've actually, I've become obsessed with his gold foil pickups. Right. Like if I could put them in every guitar, I would because they're incredible. Um, and, you know, I tried my first set from him years ago. Um, and was just blown away by how they sounded. Mm. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's just the sound that I've always been searching for. <laughs> so that's a bit cliche, but, um, 
I don't know. They're really super responsive um, to the way you play. Um, and because that's the way I play, I play with a lot of dynamic and, you know, switch between playing with a pick and fingers and, you know, right on the borderline between clean and dirty. Um, I just love the way that, um, you know, their clean is just so nice. It's got a lot of depth and a lot of chime. Um, they, de- they don't seem to be harsh ever. Um, but then, like, you can dig into them and they just break up really nicely. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't use a lot of overdrive, um, just pretty light. Um, but when you want to push them, they, they, they do what they're told, basically. Um, mm. And they look, they look cool. Um, yeah, but they just they sound great. Has anyone else got any questions? I noticed Sam talked about uh, wanting to know more oh, about yeah. his Sherwood Gideon. <laughs> Sherwood yeah, Green. yeah, yeah. So there was a green, um, the Sherwood Green Gideon that I posted a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. uh, when I came back from my break. Um, yeah, Sam bought that, and it's, yeah, cool. it's in transit. So yep. he's eagerly oh, so waiting. He's, he's, on the, he's waiting, is he? Yeah. Geez, that's 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 uh yeah, that's that's the hard part, especially in this time and age. Like, you know, yeah, like I, I had a mate send me something from Melbourne up to Heathcote the other week and, and uh it took uh about ten days. Yeah. Just to get <laughs> two hours away. Oh, and then was... I ordered I ordered some airbags for my four wheel drive the other day from Queensland. They arrived overnight. <laughs> yeah. It is wild and unpredictable. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like um government leaders. Uh anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're getting political. Now, track. Right? Back to okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's as political as today gets. Okay. Um Noted. <laughs> So if you're going to be, uh, so you sh- you're going to make a bit of a conscious effort to shift away from using Blackwood just due to the associated um, health. <clears throat> I'm still, I'm still tossing that up. Um, mm. Basically next year will be a lot of experimenting um, to try and figure out what direction I take. Yep. Um, because I, st- I still love using Blackwood. Like it's just, it is an incredible material um, and there's lots of ways around um, the safety aspects of it, um, but it requires money to buy the right tools. Um, mm. But, you know, as it is, a respirator and, you know, a good dust extraction seems to, you know, keep me pretty pretty well safe. Yeah, um, that's good. So, yeah. Next yeah. year, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play without any pre preconceptions about what I should be doing or whatnot. Let's see what happens. There's a very good chance that I'll just things will stay as they are, but I'll have worked out my systems better. Um, there's a couple yeah. of questions above us from there uh, Roby and Weave again, but I see that Silver yeah. Tails has asked about what's the safety issues of Tasmanian Blackwoods. So yeah, yeah so that. yeah, um, so the dust from Tasmanian Blackwood is actually a known carcinogen. So it'll give you lung cancer, basically. Mm. Um, and, <clears throat> yeah, and I mentioned earlier that I just have a, a sensitive sensitivity to it as is. Mm. So it's just like the worst hay fever that you can imagine, basically. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Not good. So, so short-term yeah, and long-term good. health for me. Yeah, mm. it's funny. There's a lot of Australian native bushes and stuff like that that'll kill you. Like, yeah. And not just from <laughs> falling on you. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no. So... I think we've asked something about set neck and bolt on. Yeah, yeah. So what's saying if you had to pick one and stick with it, what would you do? Bolt on or set oh, I, neck? I love, I love bolt on guitars. Um, mm. So that'd be my answer. Um, <clears throat> mostly because I haven't actually done a a set neck, um, and I haven't figured out how it would work for my the way I contour the tops. Um, other yeah, than basically just. Right to be able to yeah. put the angle in enough, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, and basically, yeah. I mean, the way I can imagine doing it is just doing what I do with the bolt-on, but just gluing it in. Yep. So, yeah. Just do that, man. Yeah. Maybe. Save you buying screws. And you can't buy <laughs> screws at the moment anyway, because they're all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just glue everything together. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what, what, what and, are the other questions? Uh, 
and Roby said, uh, how does the hardboard guitar sound? That's right. Is it yeah. better or worse than expected? Uh, bet, much better than expected. I was actually really surprised. Um, mm. I mean, it, to be honest, it just sounds like one of my guitars. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I, don't, I don't know, like pretty much every guitar that I play sounds like me um, mm -hmm. because of the way I play. So, mm. you know, but it has, um, and I don't know whether it's, I, I often attribute the sound of a guitar more to the neck than the body. Um, and I, I've noticed that Blackwood, that one's got a Blackwood neck and I tend to normally, Blackwood and Rosewood actually, with stainless steel frets. So ingredients that I don't, I don't normally use uh, for guitar necks. I normally use roasted maple, ebony fingerboard and um, the Evo gold frets. Mm. Um, they just have a particular flavour when blended together. Um, but I do think that Blackwood as a neck material has its own kind of vibe as well, which has this mid-range growl um, that mm. you don't get from maple. Do, 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 do. I see that uh, Andy, Andy, Andrew Bickerton's kind of weighing in on the McNally gold foils, saying that they're pretty yep. awesome as well. Yeah. Mr. Glenn would like to know what uh, scale length you prefer. Well... Uh, up until this point, I've used 25 uh, inch yeah. as pretty much the standard. Um, but the 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 uh, Masonite guitar is actually 20, 25 and a half. Um, okay. I, I don't know why. Um, mm. And I just remembered that I quite like that scale length as well. So mm. it's yeah. it's funny how uh, those those slight just the slightest of a measurement change can make such a difference mm. in the feel of the instrument, isn't it? But, yeah. Um, and then is like, that I, you, is that something you offer customers as a, um, which I know you're kind of changing the way you're doing things in the future, but is it, is it something that when people are ordering guitars, they, they have that option to kind of predetermine a bit of a scale length or do you go more the method of, Hey, look, this is what I make. And if you just happen to want one, great. Yeah. In the last 18 months, that has kind of been, my stance is that I have a recipe um, and if you like it, you can order one. Um, and, and that was mostly just to be able to try um, and streamline some of the processes. Like if you're offering lots of different scale lengths, you've got to have a million different jigs and you've got to, sure. you know, tweak every little bit of the guitar to kind of work with that scale length. Um, and I kind of wanted for a time at least to remove some of the variables, um, one, so that I could produce them more consistently and not have that, that problem-solving issue on every single guitar, mm. um, but also, you know, to be able to get a better idea of what changes made an impact. So if mm. I, you know, just said 25-inch scale, that's, that's what, what it is, um, yeah. then you can get a better sense of, you know, what difference the, the neck profile, the fret size, the you know, the hardware and the pickups, what, what difference all that makes um, to the feel and the tone of a guitar. Uh, I see uh, Weave again wants to know about where you stand with uh, glue or not to glue with your fretwork. Uh, I glue my frets in. Yep. I don't know why, I just... There's probably a few dodgy experiences early on in the part <laughs> that just kind of formed a habit, like, I think... I'm pretty certain my guitars would, um, you know, I think, I think the frets would be fine if they weren't glued in, like, but I just glued them in. Um, just, you know, because somewhere in the back of my mind, um, you know, one of the frets is just going to fall out one day for no apparent yeah. reason. So I, I glue them in, so to say. Um, yeah. But also the glue is going to end up in there anyway. Um, one of the things that I do with my guitars is I cut the tangs of the frets short um, yeah. so that I kind of like what they would be if the neck was bound. Um, <clears throat> and that way I can fill the ends of the fret slots in um, with, I just use uh, super glue and you know, wood dust basically. And it just fills in the side of the fingerboard. So it's a nice, neat, like the ends of the frets basically become almost yeah. invisible. Um, Garcia, Garcia, which is our Remy from Garcia Guitars, wants to know whether you use tight bond or super glue. Uh, for frets, I use super glue. Um, I've toyed with the idea of using hide glue, 
Um, <clears throat> I just need to try it. Mm. <laughs> but like with the super glue, it's just it's uh, it's quite easy with the method that I use. I just stand the 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 neck on its side and wick the super glue in from one edge and capillary action and just drag it all the way to the other side. Yeah. Um, and it gets into the, I guess, the edge of the um, each fret slot and hardens it. So that's that's why I use it. But any glue would work, really, um, mm. and add add that little bit extra security. Beefy wants to know when you're making him a JP Kita. Well, he's been hassling me about it for ages, but I haven't seen any money. So. <laughs> Mate, it's you, though. We don't have any. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, it just seems to be the whole the music industry in general. There's no money in it anymore. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so is he wanting something along the lines of uh, the regurgitator Maiden guitar, or is he wanting something that is a full-on keytar? Just a keytar. An actual keytar. There we go. That's what what cool. do you want, Ben? Write me, write me a, a specs list there, Ben. I'm pretty sure yeah. we're... We have talked about this, just rehousing a, a MIDI keyboard into a, you know, a wooden frame, basically. That's pretty cool. Um, with a, yeah, with a, be great. With a, uh, with a swoop on it. Yeah, yeah. A keyboard and with a swoop. Could, yeah, got a, yeah. It's got to be a hollow body, uh, a hollow body so you get a better <laughs> resonance out of the, the digital piano uh, sounds. Yeah, definitely. And I think, <laughs> um, I think all of church would love that. So. Yeah, that's right. So, me, me and Ben play at church together. Yeah, yeah. I see uh, Sammy Flair said, shout out to the uh, original gangster, Tally Parsons. So I take it that's a guitar from his personal collection. Yeah, so way back. How many mm. years ago was that, Sam? That was a while back. I built him a nice, um, yeah, thin line telly with the swoop. I think that yeah, was nice. for his 21st birthday, I think. 2013, Sammy Flair said. Oh, there you go. Way back. Okay. I think my beard was a bit yeah, shorter back then. <laughs> Your skin was probably even a bit whiter. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I'm just not getting out as much as I get older. Um, yeah. So you know, I was See, probably Mr. more Glenn, tanned back sorry, then. Mr. Glynn's in New Zealand, so he's a couple of hours ahead of us. So well, there you go. Thanks he's living in the future. Like... Yeah, he does. <laughs> and New Zealand is the country of the future that is ironically about a decade behind the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I lived there. For, I lived in New Zealand for twenty-two years, and my kids are yep. New Zealand, so I'm, I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to pick on. Yeah, fair but enough. I'm allowed to pick on four-eyes people and bald people and grey-haired people. And <laughs> good having a bunch of personal deformities because it means I can pick on everybody without. Oh, but I mean, no, no, I'm one of you. Oh dear. Oh so uh, we want a uh, mini six-string bass. Yeah. Mm. So when was that? Last year, I built uh, for. For John, who was watching before, um, he might still be. Um, it was yeah, uh, short scale six string bass, and it was mm. it was mad. Like it sounded fantastic, surprisingly mm. playable for for a wide neck. Like it had full size um, six string bass neck, and uh, yeah, that was cool. Oh, so it was still a full scale length, uh, thirty Just inch smaller body or short scale. Well, it was. Yeah, short scale, so 30 inch, um, yeah. and then built around my Arelli shape, which is a single cut. Mm. Now, Ben is mentioning the, the two string bass that I built way back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was basically the polar opposite of the six string Arelli, was uh, the two string Arelli, yeah. which ended up in WA, I think. Um, I played that. I played that in my Irish punk band. Um, That's pretty cool, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, was anybody in the band actually Irish? It's debatable. Our mm. fiddle player had the last name O'Brien, so you know you, oh, can, you could argue. Yeah, <laughs> he was good in a fight. <laughs> Must have been Irish. Awesome. <laughs> cool. So uh, about the hydro we'd use on a personal Solomon. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Aver Chain there is the mm. one that owns your. Personal Solomon that I used to own. Yeah, nice, cool. So he bought that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so the Hydro Wood um, is is on the back, so not the front. The front uh, came from a local uh, timber supplier who uh, Tasmanian Burl uh, just harvests some incredible black wood. Mm. Just goes and finds stumps that just have the most ridiculous figure in it. 
Um, but the, the timber on the back. So I, um, I got in touch with the guys at Hydro Wood somehow and I ended up going up to the lake to, to have a visit basically and see how the operation works. So Hydro Wood, if you don't know, um, there's a lake in uh, the western part of Tasmania called Lake Pyman, which um, is a hydro dam. So basically it got flooded 30, 40 years ago maybe uh, when they built a hydro dam and there's a whole forest of Tasmanian natives under there basically. And so they cruise around on a barge and they have a, a special harvesting machine. So it's like a, a grabber with a special underwater cutting head and they just go and cut down trees, drag them up. And um, so the timber has been underwater for 40, 30, 40 years, perfectly preserved um, wow. and just ready to be harvested. Harvested. So um, picked up a bunch of samples from them, from all their offcuts um, and built a, a, a few guitars. I've still got some kicking around somewhere that awesome. I need to get through. I've got some, uh, some hue and pine and yep. some celery top. So is that what gives it a little bit of weight or is it, is it kind of a bit of a weighty wood or? Yeah. Um, so blackwood's an interesting one that depending on where it grows, it, it can vary in, in weight um, mm. and colour. So the stuff from the West Coast is, is quite dark chocolate brown, uh, whereas the stuff from this side and kind of north and maybe even south tends to be more caramel um, and mm. not quite as dense. Um, but the one thing I noticed about the hydro wood is that, um, like you can really see the resins in the timber has crystallized over time. And I, I'm assuming that's from being underwater is that, um, you know, the, the moisture kind of gets pushed out of the, the timber, um, and would, would make the, the, the saps crystallize, um, mm. in place. So I, I haven't actually seen that in any any other timber other than the hydro wood blackwood. Uh, so it's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and David Lucy was just asking whether you nitro or poly. Um, so I use acrylic lacquer, um, and it is just automotive stuff. So it's no particular brand. Um, mm -hmm. So acrylic lacquer is very much. It's nitro without all the problems <laughs> um, is kind of the way to describe it. Like it's a very, they're, they're interchangeable. Like you can spray one on top of the other. Um, mm. Fender was known for using acrylic lacquers uh, for their colors and then nitro over top. Um, nitro yellows, whereas uh, acrylic lacquer doesn't. Um, mm. And it's a little bit more plastic, so it'll, it won't crack, which some people... Um, you know, some people want the yellow and the, the cracking, the weather checking um, in their finish. I'm not necessarily fussed, to be honest. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll go with something that's a little bit less toxic and uh, readily available over something mm -hmm. that the traditionalists love. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it's 40 bucks, 40, 50 bucks for a can of nitro anywhere around here, whereas, you know, an acrylic lacquer that's, Half decent quality is fifteen bucks. So. Yeah, and I see that uh, Alex of June Guitars has also asked. Um, going back to the hydro wood, he was mm. saying is it kind of like a wet, wet version of tor of torrified wood? Yeah, I guess it has its it has its own effect on the timber. Um, I remember my pop telling me this story about when they would cut down timber, um, they would they would put it in in a creek basically. Um, until they were ready to, to, to dry it and mill it. Um, one, it stops it cracking, like stops it drying out too fast and cracking, but it also mm. flushed out a lot of the saps uh, from mm. the timber. Um, but, yeah, torrification does have a similar thing where the, the, the resins crystallise to a degree, which is why, like, roasted maple smells like maple syrup because you basically creating maple maple syrup in the in the wood all the mm. sugars inside the the the, the sap um, yeah caramelized so it smells good doesn't taste as good so um, i recommend <laughs> not recommend not eating it 
don't lick your guitar. No. <laughs> well, actually, you can lick your guitar, but, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I suppose. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're called guitar licks for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it wrong, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's cool. All right, man. Well, thank you. Uh, I reckon uh, we'll call it there because I know you've yeah, got cool. a family to get on with. and um, oh, They're all uh, asleep. They're all asleep. <laughs> were they watching the interview, were they? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. I really appreciate you um, sharing a bit of your story and your time with us. And no, it's been a pleasure. Um, you know, answering questions there. That was really cool. Um, so, yeah, and looking forward to – always looking forward to seeing what you're working on next. It's um, – I love when you, you take your – your month or so off each year because I, I, I get so excited to see what you're coming <laughs> back with when you start posting again, you know, like, yeah, it's, um, oh, man. Yeah. It's great to see. You need to have a break from Instagram. It's good for the brain. <laughs> yeah. oh, we, we could all use a break from anything to do with the internet, to be honest. Correct. So, Correct. Yeah. And nice. so everyone who watched, thank you very, very much. Um, yeah, next totally. week, probably at the same, same, same day, same time. I'm going to be having a chat with Remy of Garcia Guitars. And yeah, nice. Some uh, pretty stunning acoustic guitars. So uh, looking forward to having a chat with him and um, getting, getting, seeing what he's doing as well. So, yeah. yeah cool. And there'll be plenty of other guys whose names have gone scrolling past there that are on my <laughs> list to uh, sit down and have a chat with. Alex of June Guitars, we're going to have a chat. Wilker Guitars, we're going to have a chat. Um, you know, and Roby at some stage. There's, there's so many. So, um Hopefully, this will be a good way to do it because it means I can be anywhere in the country and you guys can be where you are and um, that, that works well. Nice. So, yeah. All right, mate. Well, thank you. Cool. No worries. It's been thank a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Uru.